Hi everyone, this is number 106 and it is Eno I Remedio. It is from the Disasters of War series that Francisco Goya created between 1810 and 1824. That can be translated in a couple ways. Um, the actual translation is, and it can't be helped. But art historians have titled this, uh, and there's nothing to be done. Although the actual translation in Spain would be, and there was no remedy. But for our intents and purposes, it should be called, and there was, and there's nothing that could be done. So Goya was the court artist for Charles VI in Spain, but he also uh, belonged to an intellectual circle that embraced the ideas of the French Revolution. And his work was often subtly criticized. Um, it often, I'm sorry, his work often subtly criticized the court for which he served. But that's going to change um, his opinions with the Peninsular War that had begun in France. Um, I'm sorry, it began when France worked with Spain. Fran uh, Spain is going to allow them, allow the French to invade Portugal. However, Napoleon is going to renege on that deal, and in 1808, Napoleon launches a campaign to conquer Spain, and that would eventually place his brother, Joseph Bonaparte, on the Spanish throne. At first, many Spanish citizens welcomed Napoleon, including Goya, who brought political reform, including a more liberal constitution. However, on May 2, 1808, a rumor spread that the French were planning to kill the royal family, and the populace are going to rise up against the army and fight them in the streets. This led to mass arrests by the French army, followed by mass executions before dawn on May 3rd, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. This date helped consolidate French power in Spain, but it also marked the start of Spanish resistance to the occupation, where they had underground warfare, which they called guerrilla warfare, spelled G-U-E-R-I-L-A, which I know is a term you guys are familiar with if you study the Vietnam War, but it's a Spanish term for little war. That's where it comes from. This war ended in 1814, and uh, this series is Goya's memorial to those times of war. Goya commemorates a historical event while also condemning war and its effect on the individual. This devastating series of etchings vividly illustrates the inhumanity of war. It shows French soldiers often mutilating and desecrating the bodies of their victim, victims, and in retaliation, the Spanish often tortured the French, making them suffer long, agonizing deaths. Hunger and misery will prevail in the countryside throughout the war. In some of his prints, the identities of the French and Spanish are clear, from their attire, but in others they are less specific, and it's supposed to comment more generally on the horrible inhumanity created by war rather than the who is the victor and who is the loser. Uh, many of the events are things that Goya personally witnessed. Uh, there's a series of 83 prints um, that were not published until after he died in 1863. And some speculate that he didn't want to have the, um, uh, you know, he didn't want to be known for his belief on the inhumanity of war. The top left piece here on the screen is number 39 in the series called Grande Hazaña con Muertos, Great Deeds Against the Dead. And then our piece in the center is number 15 in the series and as I said before it's translated into and it can't be helped but art historians um, are we refer to it and um, sorry I'm totally lost my spot uh, and that <laughs> we say and there's nothing to be done um, so it's really showing man's inhumanity to man these are etchings that show not just violence, but also brutal sadism. 
This is a dramatic departure from conventional depictions of war, which are typically bloodless or with little emotional impact. Think of the, um, especially the, like the ex Alexander Mosaic would be a good example to compare this to because that one shows a victory. It shows of the retreat of the Persians. And uh, this one is just showing the inhumanity of war. Etchings are similar to engravings, which we covered with uh, uh, pre pre previous pieces from uh, Rembrandt. And um, I'm going to talk about how they do that in a second. Um, but this is uh, going to be how he creates a, basically a book of the, um, the disasters of war. So I, I got this technique description straight from Khan Academy where it says process. I think they did a really good job explaining it, so better than I could. So I'm just going to kind of go off of that. Goya created the Disasters of War series by using the techniques of etching and dry point. Goya was able to use this technique to create nuanced shade of light and dark that capture the powerful emotional intensity of the historic scene in the Disasters of War. The first step was to etch the plate. This was done by covering a copper plate with wax and then scratching lines into the wax with a stylus, a sharp needle-like implement, thus exposed the metal. The plate was then put in an acid bath. The acid bit into the metal where it was exposed and the rest of the plate was protected by the wax. Next, the acid was washed away from the plate and the plate was heated so the wax softened and could be wiped away. The plate then had soft, even recessed lines etched by the acid where Goya had drawn into the wax. The next step is dry point, not create created lines by a different method. Here Goya scratched directly into the surface of the plate with a stylus. This resulted in less even lines since each scratch left a small ragged ridge on either side of the line. These minute ridges catch the ink and create a soft distinctive line when printed. However, because these ridges are delicate and are crushed by repeatedly being run through the press, the earliest prints in the series are generally more highly valued. So each one will be numbered and sold. Uh, finally, the artist would ink the plate Wipe away any excess ink so that it only remained on the areas where the acid bit into the metal or where the stylus had scratched the surface. Then the plate and moist paper were placed atop one another and run through the press. The paper is now a print and it drew the ink from the metal and became a mirror of the plate. Okay, so that's how they make etchings and dry point. So the way that this is romantic, which it <laughs> certainly doesn't go by our definition of romantic, but for romanticism's sake, um, this is an image of blind terror and fear. So it really is supposed to be about emotion. It is also a sensational current event. Um, there's definite lifelike poses. It's an unbalanced composition and Really, there's no moral here. It's just emotion and supposed to be very dramatic. The Peninsular War had a lasting effect on Goya and his art style. Um, and he also suffered from depression, which is what this piece down here is showing um, with the bats and the owls and him with his head down. But anyway, getting back to the, the Peninsular War, which is the war between Spain and France, that is going to also lead him to painting um, the 3rd of May, which I mentioned before. This is one of his most famous pieces. He did a 2nd of May, which is the battle, and then he painted the 3rd of May. Both of them are in the Prado, and they're right next to each other, and they're, they're just amazing to see in person. Um, but the 3rd of May, I'm showing you guys this because I think it's important for you guys to see what Goya is in regards to a painter. Just like Rembrandt, he's mostly known for being a painter, not necessarily an etcher. So this is, um, I think, an important piece. Uh, and so it was painted six years after the event, and it's considered a powerful indictment of the barbarism and horrors of war. 
It contrasts starkly with other art pieces dealing with war because, again, there's no heroic martyr, um, a focus of the painting, but rather the victim who expresses fear and desperation. After the Spanish have invaded on the 2nd of May, uh, 1808, about 400 insurrectionist Spaniards were executed by French troops the next day. Goya achieves its shocking effect of the execution with a dramatic use of light and innovative composition. A lantern bathes the victims in a bright beam of light. If you notice down here in the bottom left um, side, there are um, the victims who had already been killed by the line of soldiers here. And um, these uniform officers are positioned diagonally with their backs to the viewers. As a result, we don't see their reactions. They're considered anonymous, literally faceless, showing no emotion about what they're about to do. While the victim stands diagonally opposite, considered the main focus, he has a white shirt and yellow pants and it looks like he's trying to surrender um, and um, he must know that like like the last piece that of that Goya did um, there's probably no hope for him but he's still trying to plead for his life uh, the background of the painting is the deepest darkest blue which intensifies the grim and tragic nature of the scene and although artists um, isn't taking sides he's not saying what's good and what's bad there's no moral here this scene is just supposed to be an indictment on the horrors of war and the suffering it causes because it gives suffering a face so this is considered revolutionary because it shows there's no heroism in war just victims and suffering and i i really liken this piece to if you guys know the um, photograph from the Vietnam War of the little girl running after she had been, uh, her village had been napalmed, um, that would be something similar. It's not really an indictment. It's really just showing how people are affected emotionally from war. And Goya does an amazing job doing that. And so um, that's... Um, that's, that's the, I guess I have a few more things to say. Um, the, he also is almost like a Christ-like, uh, pose of the man who's about to be shot with his arms outstretched like Christ would have been on the cross. Um, and so that was something that was to add, which I guess you guys could see. And also in the background, there's a church that is dark and quiet as if the church has no say here and there's not a star in the sky which means that there's i mean it just adds to this idea that there is no hope okay so that is not just the uh you know i remedio but also the third of may by francisco goya